roughly today I feel like sharing about the elements in relevance to life in London, thriving in London and well-being and also asking questions and the power of asking questions to unleash our full consciousness, vitality and possibilities in our lives. So, um, in terms of the elements, I'm specifically talking about the ways in which we can be nourished. Because there's so many ways in which we can be, we, we can be nourished. When we're living in a big, crazy city, which all cities inevitably are, because most cities <laughs> on this planet right now are pretty cut off from nature, so there's a fair degree of insanity going on. And a lot of it can be very fun and entertaining, and at the same time it can be a little imbalancing. So it's very good to tune in to the primordial elements, which is why I guess a lot of you are here in Wild Food Cafe because we, uh, we like to create a great vibe and create delicious food that's very much in line with nature and is nourishing for us on numerous levels. So there's many ways that we can be nourished and we're well aware of this as a restaurant that it's not just about creating nourishing nutritionally rich food that you know pays attention to nature and magnifies that but it's also very much about the vibe and the hospitality that we receive when we go somewhere we can go and have the most perfect nutritional meal somewhere but if the team that serves it to us are grumpy and we don't receive much hospitality we're not going to be nourished on a very primal level food is about celebration we could argue that everything in life is about celebration because whatever we're doing or being in life, if we're celebrating, it's going to be all that much better than if we're being unappreciative and grumpy. So uh, celebration is a great way to let more light in, whether it's to the food we're eating, whether it's to the meditation we're sitting in, whether it's to the sport we're playing, whether it's to the um, love we're making. Celebration and appreciation go a long way. So. Um, the other elements that we can be nourished by, obviously the elements that are famous in all of our, all of the cultures that we come from and all our ancestors are things like pure waters and the energy of water and the symbolism of water and the fact that we're water-based life forms and that anything we eat and any beings that we interact with on the physical level are water-based life forms. We get told in school and colleges and universities and all the way up to people doing PhD and master's degrees that we're carbon-based life forms. The fact is that we're a minimum of 70% water, and when we're babies we're probably closer to 90% water. And one of the key markers of how youthful and full of vitality are, we are, and or, or compared to how much we're aging, is our level of hydration. So water is a very much a key indicator, and obviously we know that water, you know, which should be as pure as possible. And we can look at that on a mechanical level of purifying water and revitalizing water, but essentially it comes down to celebrating and appreciating water. And the more we do that, the more it turns from just some random liquid that comes out the tap to acknowledging that water is a very magical substance of which all beings are made up of, um, and it is a multi-dimensional substance that can become anything and infuse anything and give life to anything. When we look for life on other planets, the first thing we look for is water. So, doing, we probably all of us here have heard of the work of Masuro Emoto. Anyone not heard of Masuro Emoto? Okay, so, uh, wrote great books such as Messages from Water, etc. He's a scientist that decided to start uh, doing different experiments, experiments on water, uh, whether it was praying over water, talking to water, writing things next to water, playing music next to water, and then freezing the water and, and under a microscope, looking at the geometry and the shape of its crystals and how its crystalline structure changed vastly compared to the environment and the vibrations the water was exposed to. And of course, being water-based beings, whatever we're focusing on the time, whatever we're thinking about, whatever we're doing, structures the water in our body in different ways. 
either harmoniously or disharmoniously. So it's an excellent practice every day, especially if we're living in the city, to find some way to acknowledge and appreciate and potentiate water. By potentiate, I mean bring, bring our experience of water to its highest potential, to its most magical potential. Although it's a lot more challenging to do it living in a city, there still exists the possibility of waking up every morning and going and jumping in a pond or a river. There are places in London to do it. I know plenty of people that do it. I do it whenever I can. I'd love to do it more. Things like going up to Hampstead Heath, if you're lucky enough to live in that area, or Richmond, or even the Thames, some people are mad enough to do it. And going and jumping in a body of natural, flowing, moving, living water is the best way to de-stress from London. Whether that's mental stress, electromagnetic stress, work stress, emotional stress, mental stress. When we actually throw ourselves into water and surrender ourselves to living waters. And specifically by living waters I mean waters that occur in nature. Rivers, lakes, streams are living waters compared to water that's stagnant. When things become stagnant in the natural cycles of, of the planet and they, they are, are less than living. So it's kind of, that there's a reason that the idea and the archetype of baptism exists and that it happens in water. You know, whether it's Jesus and John the Baptist or someone being christened or, you know, the various other faiths and traditions where water is used as a blessing. And we can give ourselves that blessing every day, even if it's just in the shower or the bath at home. It's very powerful to acknowledge how water can cleanse us and purify us and purge any toxins out, whether that's physical toxins of heavy metals we've been breathing in or plastics from our furniture, or it's purging heavier, denser emotions like depression and anger and all those kind of things. So that's why it's always excellent if we're having a bath or a shower to just take some time in that process to pray, for want of a better word. When I say pray, I mean appreciate. To, to use the element of water to think of something to be thankful for. As the saying goes, what we think about and thank about, we bring about. So, um, you know, if we've been having any worries or concerns or stresses or blockages or anything, we can use the fact that water is such a metaphor for flow and movement. It is the epitome of flow and movement, amongst many other things it being the epitome of. And we can use the element to actually move the thoughts, emotions, and atoms and cells and photons of light in our body. We can use them to remove them, to move them, to transform them. Water can be very powerful in that way. Of course, doing it out in nature is probably the greatest thing, whether that's Hampstead Heath or the Thames or when it's raining. You know, taking the time when it's raining in the city, whether it's so whether people lab label it acid rain or not, it's still rain that comes from the clouds. And no matter how it might be polluted slightly, it's still the water cycle, which is an extremely potent elemental happening in our lives. So to take a moment when it's raining, rather than just going under an umbrella or hiding inside and resisting it. Anyone here ever stripped off and run outside in the rain? One confession. I've done it. Okay, so, you know, most of us, we might have done it more likely when we were children. But those things kind of get, we allow them to get brainwashed out of us. Um, but I'm, I feel very lucky to have done my best to erase, reawaken that as an adult, even in London, and stripped off in the middle of London and run outside in the rain. And I highly encourage it, and I'm sure everyone here wishes they would do it, even if they probably suppress or repress themselves from doing it. So, um, that's me touching on water for a bit. I'm just bearing in mind how many things to squeeze in in the next 20 or so minutes. So, find ways to cleanse yourselves with water because it really helps the experience of London go more powerfully. So, bathing or showering, think about you, what you want to let go of, what you want to wash away 
from your life and what you would like to flood yourself with. Whether it's flooding yourself with joy, happiness, with appreciation, something flowing in, something flowing out. Let's touch on fire briefly. briefly. The other, apart from water, water and fire, they're very physical manifestations of the physical solid world, of the material world. But the great thing about water and fire is that they are in plasmonic states of being. They're plasma. So they look like physical solid things, but they move like energy, like liquid, but we can still see them. Whereas, you know, air and you know, some people talking about the terms energy these days is more and more recognized compared to a few decades. So fire is a great way to to cleanse ourselves. And traditionally, all of our uh, ancestors, and still today, all indigenous people spend time every day with fire. And in fact, we don't even need to look at a candle or a flame or a campfire outside of ourselves. It's very great for us to remember each day that we as physical living human beings are on fire. And a great way to, to think about that and perceive that is the fact that, different speaking, someone having life force and a living body and uh, a less than living body. When someone's, someone chooses to expire, and leave their body, there's considerably le less fire in there. For instance, you know, a body goes from a living body where it's warm to cold and dead. So heat is a major part about how the spirit animates our body. And when we're alive, we're warm and we're radiating energy. There's a fire going on inside of us. Okay, we might not be setting physical things on fire, literally, although allegedly some people are capable of that phenomena. Um, but to acknowledge and remember that there is fire going in, the, in this body, there is energy animating this body, and a, a big part of that is the fact is the element of fire. And so we can do things to cleanse the fire within our bodies. If we are within five feet or so range from even the smallest candle to a campfire, we can use that elemental energy of fire to cleanse our body, to burn away impurities, whether it's mental, emotional, physical toxicity. So taking time each day to light a candle. Most people love to play around with a, with a candle, you know, a way that a lot of people can practice bringing fire into their lives, consciously or unconsciously, is through things like smoking. Not that I'm encouraging everyone here to take up smoking for the sake of uh, cleansing themselves with fire, but on a primal, elemental level, one of the reasons that people feel attracted to smoking is the fact that they get to have a little interaction with some fire every day. In, in a culture where that's been majorly decreased, you know, we rely on light bulbs and uh, televisions and computers. And we've got to remember that the source of all our modern technology today the inspiration for it all, and the element that allows that technology to happen more than any other, is the element of fire. You know, whether it's a, an iPhone, or a television, or a computer screen, all of those things that we sit and watch, which echo the way we used to sit and watch a fire, they were all made through some kind of burning of trees and the Earth's resources and oils and fossil fuels being burnt in fire to smelt minerals and elements into different shapes and objects and devices. And when those devices are plugged into electricity, which is again mostly generated from some kind of fire alchemy, we sit and watch those screens and they give off light like fire. So it's good to bear that in mind why this why we've got this huge desire to stare at this glowing thing all the time. <laughs> and now you see you know, people at rock concerts or whatever concerts, they used to hold up lighters, and now they're holding up their iPhone or whatever. So that's great, but nothing quite does. I, I, I get more nourishment from a candle, and more. it, it, it might sound extremely primitive, and naive, but I get more nourishment from a candle or a campfire than uh, an iPhone or a computer, even though it's supposed to be amazingly advanced technology with access to the internet and 
ability to communicate with each other. If you speak to uh, elders and wisdom keepers of indigenous traditions or the ancestors, they used fire in the same way that we use computers today. They would stare into the fire and receive visions from the fire. Whether it was psychic stuff, whether it was telepathic stuff, by staring to the fire, they used the fire as a portal. Because what happens in fire, fire is an accelerator. It bends space and time. And you can see that by just looking at the logs or pieces of wood that are in a fire and how they age. Just those physical things burning in. How time is sped up in a fire. And because of that alchemical time and space bending plasma portal that's opened in a fire, you can receive information from that fire and you can broadcast information into that fire. And don't, I, I, I can't say that I'm capable of explaining it in excruciating detail, but I've experienced it and I feel a lot of people have. And if they don't think they have, then they just have to experiment with it and see how they feel. Because in the end, all of these elements are here for us to have a relationship with and interact with. And um, we are the observer, we are the experimenter, we are the scientist. And our personal experience is going to speak a lot tr more truly for us and a lot more authentically for us than listening to someone with a PhD or a scientific degree or someone that's written a book. We've got to be the, our own scientist in our own lives and ask questions of ourselves and trust our inner guidance. And that is such a powerful thing because as humans in modern civilized society we've given away so much of that power for generations and centuries and millennia now thinking, oh, there's experts outside of us that tell us what to do, whether they're schools or teachers or etc. Rather than trusting our own inner guidance and our own inner scientist and our own inner divinity or priest or sovereignty or intelligence or our own inner king and queen. So, fire is a cool way to do that. Taking the time each day to light a candle and pray into it. And by prayer, just think of all the things to appreciate. It's, it's much more potent, sharing from my personal experience, to, um, for me, prayer is just not asking for something. You know, many of us have been taught for generations that prayer is like, oh, give me, give me, give me. Want, 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 need, need, need. Not appreciate, not appreciating the things and the people in our lives and kind of, uh, as a friend likes to of mine likes to call churches cosmic complaint boxes. People go in and they say, you know, they ask for more stuff, complain about stuff, rather than just appreciate stuff. The most potent prayers are to appreciate stuff, because if you appreciate stuff, you already acknowledge that you have it, and if you acknowledge that you have it and you appreciate it, it expands. Whereas if you complain and don't appreciate it and see lack, then you continue to create lack. So, using the portal of a candle can spread your appreciation more and more and it will become a, a lot more elemental and alchemical and primal and a deeply felt experience to take the time each day, even if it's just for one minute, to light a candle and think of things to be thankful for for that day. It will it'll change our vibration, it will make us more appreciative. When we're more appreciative, we're more happy. And we all love to feel happier. And the key is to the more we appreciate, the happier we'll be. It's very easy, some of us get into a, a pattern where we think, oh, when, uh, when I'm happier, I'll be more appreciative. But it doesn't happen that way. We'll be waiting forever to suddenly happiness to happen without being appreciative. But the more we can be appreciative now, happiness happens. So, um, playing with fire. Of course, it's a lot more potent on the level if we can build a campfire, etc., or if we can have some kind of mini fireplace in our house. But play, play with fire. Sound like a pipe, an advertisement for pyromania. Um, don't burn down 
buildings and cities and lots of them. Take a little time to appreciate the fire and to remember just doing that little ritual of seeing the fire outside of yourself, whether it's a fireplace or a candle, helps acknowledge the inner fire. Sometimes it means eating food that comes from fire. For instance, just on a personal note, very pe this might be relevant to very few people, but just to uh, share something, I only ate raw food for 10 years, between 2000 and 2010, which was an amazing experiment and experience for me, and I did it because I loved it and I felt really amazing, and still to this day, I eat very much mostly raw plant foods. Uh, but after 10 years or so, it was great when I was uh, traveling all over the world and living in places like California and, and India and eating lots of fresh fruit but having spent about having spent many years back in London and not not traveling as much and not going on as many adventures I was kind of feeling a bit damp and cold and eating raw food all throughout the year so uh, I just had this big primal craving to eat to, to feel the energy of fire and not just eat some cooked food. I got an extreme amount of nourishment from having some wood fired stuff. The, the element of fire was missing in my life mass massively. I started experimenting a lot after about six years of raw food. I reintroduced teas into my life. I hadn't had hot, hot drinks. And receiving the energy of fire and heat from making teas and coffees and herbal potions, which is still something I love playing around with a lot these days. Very healing. Because I've neglected the energy of fire, and as great as raw foods can be, we need all the elements in our lives. Elements are so, you know, fire, air, earth, and water are extremely primal. 